Want to see the coolest live action shot of Batman ever? Check this out. That's from one of the four Batman film projects that we're going to be going over today. Each one of them is amazing in their own right, so stick around till the end. I assure you that the last is going to be a delightful surprise. Now, it's no secret that fan-related projects are usually dog water. The love of fans doesn't equate to good writing, acting, or a decent budget, but luckily Batman is a character that can be represented well on a low budget, and sometimes the other two can get by on luck. The projects we're going to be looking at today are examples of one ones that don't get by on luck and instead through hard work, dedication, and raw talent were made for us peasants to gobble up. So anyways, let's get into it. First off, Riddle of the Mask. The first project we're looking at takes the saw approach of low budget. Fuck it, shoot the whole thing in one room. Also, make it dark as fuck, lighting wise. We watch as the Riddler interrogates Helena Bertinelli in order to find out the identity of Batman. This film was funded through Indiegogo, and luckily the budget they asked for wasn't atrociously high. It was only around $1,600, so that's fair enough. The actors do a good job representing their respective characters. The dialogue and situation is intense, and the ending left me wanting more. I did have the thought that maybe they got the idea to make this after watching the Joker interrogation from the Dark Knight and wanted to try their hand at an interrogation scene where the villain has the power. Director Justin Zagri also directed a Harry Potter short about the battle between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, but I don't care about Harry Potter, so find that for yourself if you're interested. Honestly, I found this while writing the script for the other three projects and I decided that I really needed to include it as it deserves more attention. And I admit that this one is more Batman adjacent, so let's get into projects where the big man is the star. Next, Dead End. I personally consider this the gold tier standard that all fan made films need to follow in. So, if by some miracle you haven't seen this, let me recount the story to you. The Joker has escaped the asylum again. Batman tracks him down to a rooftop. He's cornered. You made me, Daddy. <laughs> Criminal scum like you made me. Then a fucking xenomorph rips him off the ground into the shadows. Batman then proceeds to nearly get killed by it. Then we see the three magical dots. It's the Predator. Or Yaucha, if you're a nerd. Batman fights it and proceeds to win. He's about to kill it, but then three more appear. So Batman gets in his fighting stance as we see more xenomorphs emerge from the darkness behind him. It's absolute insanity. Sadly, it ends right there, but if you're still hungry for more from director Sandy Calora, he also made another short in 2004 called World's Finest, showing off Batman and Superman together. It's really short, but honestly, it's also incredible. On a budget of roughly $30,000, he was able to make Dead End in 2003. And judging from his IMDb, he now works as a producer here and there on some TV shows, but I wasn't able to find out much more. Despite premiering at Comic-Con, nobody from Hollywood contacted this man immediately and offered him a job, which is truly a shame and honestly a crime. And important side note, Dead End includes the absolute greatest live action bat suit we've ever seen. It's like an Alex Ross painting come to life. Also, it even has white eyes, which in live action, I don't really mind not getting, but seeing it done like this is absolutely breathtaking. Clark Bertram is the actor portraying Batman here, and since the suit is basically just spandex, it's 100% Bartram, baby. And I didn't need molded plastic to improve my physique. Pure West. And if you think armored Batman looks better than a cloth Batman, then your opinion is invalid and shut up. Also, we've recently just passed the 20 year anniversary of Dead End, and I could have made an entire video around it, but instead I'm going to save it for the 30th anniversary. So, see you in 10 years. Next up, 
City of Scars. This fan film has a special place in my heart, as when I was a kid, my father refused to get Netflix for our family, saying that it's a waste and cable was better. So at night when I was in my room, I would watch this through YouTube on my Xbox often, since the quality of YouTube videos at the time was 15 Big Macs, please. Not great, but enough of my sob story. So if you haven't heard of this, City of Scars tells the story we've heard a thousand times, but a little bit better. Joker escapes Arkham, leaving a trail of horror and bloodshed, of which Batman needs to follow in order to save a child that the Joker has taken hostage. Along the way, we see many familiar faces from the Batman mythos. The 30 minute short is as true to the character of Batman as one could get, and we know exactly who to thank for that. The team behind it, Bat in the Sun Productions, are no rookies, led by Aaron. Aaron and Sean, I'm about to butcher their last name, Sean Key, have been making live action superhero fan films for years. Most notably, their superpower beatdown series where they take characters and pit them against each other in live action. One thing I love about their portrayal of Batman is that they've made him like kind of their own by designing their own logo that's so recognizable and is present in nearly all of their Batman features to date. This one is nearly 12 years old, but I still find myself revisiting it throughout the years for a dose of nostalgia. And also, the budget of this is apparently $27,000. I'm starting to see a trend here about the budgets. They don't need to be $100,000. <laughs> Cough, cough. And speaking of nostalgia, let's get into Lego Batman Rises. Before you click off because this is Lego, hear me out. 2017's Lego Batman movie is incredible, and I believe it's a top three Batman film. However, Forrest Whaley's Lego Batman series raised me and formed my understanding of comedy. I understand many people may look over this because it's Lego, but if that's your opinion, then I feel sorry for you. Animation as a medium has a lot to offer and can include elements that live action could never. Growing up as a child watching his brick films of his demented Batman being addicted to crack and murdering left and right has a special place in my heart. Batman, what happened to the back computer? Oh, I, uh, I sold it to a pawn shop for about $25. I really hate my crack addiction. They just stinted my car. <laughs> While this Batman may not be a traditional or faithful adaptation of the character, I believe it's one of the most enjoyable flavors of Batman that you could watch at any time. So Lego Batman Rises is the story of a Batman who has lost his way after the Joker had died. And how did he die? Well, he didn't die at the hands of Batman, surprisingly, but in a freak accident where he just gets hit by a car off screen. With no arch nemesis, Batman retires, living day to day with no reason to go on. Hey. Aren't you the Batman? Don't talk to me. Yep, I'm just chilling. Uh, you know, smoking a doobie. Uh, got wasted earlier, but it's kind of wearing off. Years later, Nightwing gets the idea to create a portal to bring in alternate versions of Joker to reignite Batman's passion to fight crime. However, the portal brings in so many Jokers that they take down the entire Bat family and even the Justice League. But through teamwork, Batman comes out on top. But the journey is what makes this film special, so I hope that you take the time to go watch it. I'm going to make a video in the future solely on Forrest's work, as I believe he is one of the greatest YouTubers to have ever graced the platform, and I urge you to check out all of his Batman videos and more. So anyways, this was my list. I hope you enjoyed it and I promise that there are better videos coming soon. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.